Hello, everybody. This is Will from the Think Different Podcast. Back again for another how-to video, and I decided to do something very special today. I wanted to show everyone how to use Safari. Safari is, without a doubt, the best web browsing experience as far as safety, as far as privacy, as far as tracking, all these amazing features, along with the speed of the browser, considering it is the best browser to use. So I wanted to show you some of the features that you're going to use a lot in the toolbar. Also, if you look to the menu bar, uh, some things you may not even realize that happens uh, in the machine that, that it shows. So I wanted to start off right away with the number one feature that I like about this entire browser. Number one is something over here that was introduced into the newest iOS, and that is the tracking. The tracking feature of these sites is basically how the advertisers use you to go between platform to platform and try to, you know, manipulate you and try to find things and, and make, keep a track record of your web browsing experience and keep it here stored. Uh, and that way, when you go to website to website, it's actually going to keep tracking you as you go along. Well, Apple came out with a feature to prevent tracking for you. This is a feature you can turn on. And by doing that, you are blocking websites from knowing what your activity is. And that way, when you get those advertisements, they're not specifically catered to you. Well, I wanted to start right away with Apple.com as my perfect example of this. So if you don't see this icon here, really quick, I'm going to show you if you're missing stuff from this toolbar, and then I'll get right back to this, what you can do. So as you can see, I have a couple different icons up here. Uh, this one, for example, hides my sidebar. You also have a backward forward button. This one's the autofill, which I really love having. Uh, and then I have like text size. If I want to go up and want to go down, I can uh, make it larger, bigger. And then on the other side are some icons you might see on your iPhone, like the share button, which has all these different things, including bookmarking, emailing, messaging, airdropping. Uh, you can also hit the plus sign for a new tab, and then you can see all your tabs open at the same time. Well, you could actually customize this entire bar to what it caters for you. If you go to the very top of the menu bar and you go to view, there is something here called the customized toolbar. And if you click that, it's going to open up this brand new window. So you can now see some of the items uh, that you might want to have up there or maybe that you don't want up there. So here's an example. If you want to take something off, you can. I am going to drag something that I want up there. So example, if you like to print stuff off websites and you don't want to have to go to the menu bar, just drag it up and you just place it right there and poof, there it is. Uh, if you don't want it, you can just take it off, poof, it disappears. But you can see you can add things up here. You can go put your bookmarks up there. You can, you can definitely put stuff on and take stuff off. Uh, so let's go back to this right here. Now, the trackers on this website include PayPal.com, which was originally part of this. So Apple does have one tracker that was being used on the site, which is PayPal, which I thought was interesting because yesterday I looked at this and Apple had nothing. So I, I thought it was interesting that this showed up. But anywhere you go on Apple.com, uh, there really is no tracking on this. It, you know, Apple is really, you know, when they say they don't want their privacy is important. Look at these trackers. Now, I want to go to one website, which is, you know, I'm a big wrestling fan. So I want to go to w.com and it's going to load everything up. And I want to show you the difference. And I go here to this 29 prevented from profiling you at all of these websites. So think of how much money advertisers are paying for this right now to try to get your information. 29. You know, that's a large number. I mean, that's one of the bigger numbers I saw, which I'm a little surprised. But even if I go to like CNN.com, 17 right here. If I go to Fox News or if I, or anything, I'm just showing all different websites, you will see the amount of tracking that goes on. Fox News actually is not as bad as like CNN, but WWE was the worst. I couldn't believe how much it is. If you have been using Safari for a long time and you have all these trackers on you, well, you, and you don't want them, you can actually get rid of them. So I'm going to do that right now. So under Safari, I'm going to go to Preferences. And then on here, there's a section called Privacy. And it's right here, Cookies and Website Data. And then you have also Website Tracking. This is a feature that actually blocks people from trying to get on there. And then you have Cookies and Website Data. And if you go to Manage Website Data, this is where the tracking is coming from and all these different people are basically tracking your browsing experience. 
and you can remove them, but you can see here, look at that, all those sites are are all public. I just went to like three websites and this was empty. You know, so if I hit remove all, 181 sites were storing information. That is crazy. That is a and I went to four or five websites after I removed this cache. So that is a crazy amount of, of tracking that is done, but it is prevented, thank God, from this website tracking. Also in here I like is autofill. This is one of my favorite things where you can autofill everything in for you. Using information from my contacts, well, if I hit the edit button, it's going to open up a, uh, my contact book, which then has all of my information, which of course is blocked out from you seeing it. But the idea is that you have to set yourself up inside of contacts as the person. Hopefully you're using an iPhone. That's already happening. Let's go back here and let's go to a website. So I'm going to go, uh, we'll go to like apple.com again. We'll use Apple. Now, if you would like to save this as a bookmark or a favorite, now if you look on the side here, I have my favorites opened up right here, but let's say I don't have that open up. I can hit this icon. It goes away. It gives me more room. Or if you want it back, you can just show it right here. Uh, but what I'm going to do is there's a little, a uh, couple ways you can do a bookmark. Now you can go to the share button, add bookmark, and you can now give it a name. And then it will add it right to your favorites. But of course, there's so many, if you have folders or if you want to use bookmark menu, which I don't typically use, I like just using bookmarks or favorites. And I hit Apple and then I hit add. It's going to add it. Now, because I have a lot of icons up here, it added it to the very end of the list. So you can see there, it adds it to the very end of the list. My recommendation is, that's why I kind of like using the sidebar, because I liked having my bookmarks right here. And I can just drag it to the very top of the list. And now you can see Apple's right here on the left. But I don't need Apple.com, uh, so I'm just going to drag it off. Poof, goes away. Very, very simple. Even another way you could do a bookmark is, if you are going to the website, there's a little icon right here on the side. You could just drag it down into the bar. You see, it makes room for you. This is my favorite way of doing it. I like doing it just by going to the icon up here and just dragging it down to it. I think it's much easier. So I hope that's helpful for you. All right, so let's talk about something else I really like. Uh, when I go to news websites, I really like eliminating all the stuff that's around it. So Mac Rumors, since I really love Mac Rumors, is uh, you know I want to avoid all the ads, all the extra stuff. You see, there's so much stuff on the screen when I go visit an article. Uh, so I'll give you an example. I'm going to open up a new tab. So I'm going to hit the plus sign. I'm going to go to CNN.com, and I'm going to open up uh, uh, something. It doesn't really matter what it is. So this is how I would view all this, but I don't want to see all of the ads. I don't want to see the more CNN. I'd rather just see the article. I don't care about anything else. See all the stuff that just started popping up, all these ads. Well, if you want to avoid all that, so let's say I go to an article here uh, about Apple. It opened up something called the reader view. Reader view is eliminating everything on the screen except for the article. And there's a few ways you can allow this, but reader view is very powerful for me and I really enjoy it. So how that happens is, uh, again, I'm going to go into our uh, view and then here there's a, a reader icon right here, which is the shift command R. So I'm going to do that on my keyboard right now, which now hides it. Shift command R brings up the reader view. But if you want that to be permanent on the website, there's a way you can do that. You're going to go to Safari. Preferences. Uh, and in here, there is a way to go to change that. So let's go to websites. And now under reader view, you can actually say automatically use reader on these websites below. Mac rumors I turned on. So it knows what websites are already kind of part of that. And you can actually just change it. So now if I say CNN, I want you to be permanently on a reader view. I turn that on. And now I'm going to go back to CNN. And already, I'm, it already fixed it, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to choose a, another article. And there we go. So now I just see the reader view. So reader view, I think, is really powerful if you just want to see the articles. Sometimes there are things on the site, maybe like a YouTube video or a video you want to watch, and then this kind of gets in the way. So sometimes, example here, there's a video here. Maybe you would rather watch that than the reader. So you have to take it as there's a positive and a negative to it, uh, to that. So it's really up to you.
All right, another one of my favorite features in here is to mail people things. So if I go to the share icon, mail this page, automatically places the article in there. And then all I gotta do is write who I wanna write to. So if I'm, I'm just gonna put myself as an example. Uh, and that's it. Pretty simple to do. All you have to do is just simply go to the page. I'm gonna go back to Safari. And again, you can open up all your different tabs. In fact, if you see on my iPhone right here, there's a whole bunch of things from my iPhone and my iPad as well. So there's a whole bunch of different tabs if you are opening another device and you wanna go watch it here. This icon right here, the start page. This was a new feature built in, and this is almost like what Chrome does, where they have your favorites, your most visited. Uh, you can actually customize all of this. So if you want, like down here on the bottom right corner, you can tell it what you wanted to add. You can even put background images. So if you want a background image, you can. So this is very Chrome-esque, because that's how Chrome is kind of set up. So you can have different backgrounds. Of course, you can hit the plus sign and do your own, but you can, like if you don't want to see the privacy report, you can block that. Siri suggestions, your reading list, if you have a reading list set up, which is the glasses over here. And by the way, what reading list is, in case you wanted to know, this is a way to save your sites that you want to go back and watch later. And also these will be viewable offline. So if there are articles you want to read and you don't want to, if you don't have an internet connection, you can use the reader option. Uh, and again, that could, you can always go, somewhere to do that. So if you go to the share button, you can add to the reading list if you needed to. Uh, but going back to the start page, uh, that's how this is set up uh, regarding that. Now you can also decide how you want your browser to always start. So if I go to preferences, you have an option of how you want Safari to open up. So there's an option here for your home page, which right now is apple.com, but I don't even use that. I actually tell it to start with the start page. So you can have many different options. You could do start page, home page, empty page, or same page. So you could do that also. I like the start page. I like this layout right here. It's perfectly aligned for what I like to do. Of course, everyone is different. Uh, you can remove your history items after one year, one month, two weeks. So depending on how much, how often you want to be tracked. Uh, you can also do file download locations, which is the download folder. I typically tell people don't change that unless you have a, a reason to. Uh, and then remove download list items after one day. So you can actually say, you know, how long do you want the items in your downloads list to stay there? Uh, so that's really up to you. I mean, you could say upon successful download, just remove it. Uh, I personally like after one day because I want to quickly get back to something. So I like the idea of just clicking here. There's something right here I just downloaded a day ago and I could easily just go to Finder and I hit the magnifying glass. So you could add more extensions into your web browser. So if you want to add like Honey, which is a very popular one, it basically will apply coupon codes for you. There's also, uh, you can add more extensions to it. Uh, like if you go to two, uh, more extensions, it'll take you to the web browser and it will show you all the different extensions in the app store that you can use. Like Zoom is in there. Zoom in and out with a slider, DuckDuckGo, like there's a lot. Grammarly is a very popular one, which I use. So I have I have Grammarly, Honey. Uh, these, are, these are the most popular ones. And of course, there's paid ones as well. Uh, if you, I know, I don't think you should ever do a paid one, but that's just my opinion. Uh, so there's a bunch of different extensions that add to your experience to your browser, which, you know, Apple has really fell behind on, but now they're finally starting to kind of catch up on it, but they're trying to do it in a safe manner. So extensions are very powerful. You have to kind of do the research on what you like, but I do feel like like Grammarly is one of my favorite, which I'll turn on right now. So that way my spelling is right because I'm a sucky speller. Uh, and then like Honey, again, is a good discount one. And then like if you're doing WebEx and there's a bunch of different ones. So take a look around the extensions, play around with them, see what you like. Uh, and then another, my, I'm, I, I keep saying I'm done, but I got one more and that's the passwords. What's also great about this too is on my Apple Watch right now, you can't see it, but there is a double click to approve right here on my watch right now that would actually allow me to get in. So without using my Touch ID, I'm just going to use my watch. And my watch is theoretically going to let me in. And this is where it would be stored. All my passwords to everything. Best part about this is that it's going to link to my iCloud. And that means my iCloud keychain is going to sync it to my phone. So this is where all of the passwords are. Uh, so it's really interesting how quickly you can 
uh, you know, keep access to that. And then as you can see, I'm going to go, I don't even go to this website, entirelypets.com. I don't care if you know my password on this one. It doesn't really matter to me. So you could take a look at something like this, where it's a password that's being stored and you could actually remove it or add passwords in here. So this is where you store your passwords and they link directly to your iCloud. Now with iCloud, you have to have two-factor authentication to allow this. So please make sure that's enabled and then you can sync it across everywhere. And then that way all your passwords are the, are the same. You don't need a password manager like 1Password. I don't understand why people have 1Password. This does all the work and it keeps it up to date all the time. So my recommendation is definitely go and store your passwords inside Safari. It's safe, it syncs across everywhere, and you will love it once you start really using it. So that is Safari. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour here on the Think Different Podcast. Remember, we have new episodes every Friday, uh, almost every Friday. I would say every other Friday. And I hope this was valuable to you and enjoy uh, all of our videos that we've seen on our channel and join us on our podcast platform on Fridays. Thank you, guys.